Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, our segment here where we take a look at the national dailies and analyze the stories that are making headlines. And today we've invited Mr. Ezekiel Iyayetok to join us for the discussion. Good morning, sir, and thanks for joining us. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be with you. Fantastic. Looking forward to that sign of salutation you give every time. So good morning to you too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's begin with the Punch newspaper. It's the Niger school invasion. Bandits tied 42 abductees in pairs, fled to bush on motorbikes, and that's an eyewitness account from a resident. Invaders kill students who raised the alarm, kidnap 27 students, 15 workers. A father of an abducted worker says, I have not heard anything about my daughter. And rise up, fight bandits, kidnappers back, defense minister tells Nigerians. On the top here of, uh, still here on the punch, we can see a picture of the government just below on the punch, a picture of the signpost of the Government Science College uh, in Niger State. It says, Government Science College, Kajara, Niger State, after gunmen's abduction of 27 students and 15 workers. And on the right side, we can see pictures of the school. The facilities here look dilapidated. We can see here photos of a classroom with very poor facilities, just a desk and a very, very bad roof right there. So sad. That is even the conditions that the students were learning in when they were you know, It, it was abducted. already criminal for them to be in that kind of environment learning you know, before they were kidnapped. True. And uh, on... On the top page of the Punch newspaper here, we see this one, FG to borrow $1.2 billion for a Greek mechanization, others. Fuel price hike looms nationwide as marketers meet. 442 billion Naira FG personnel cost for 2019 blocks from being stolen. That's according to the ICPC. It blocks 42 billion Naira from being stolen. Use of cryptocurrencies a concern, says IMF. We need to read more of that on page 36 to get more insight on what the IMF is saying there. This one says, court convicts, discharges, bedridden suspects for raping cousin. That's uh, below there on the punch newspaper. Power grid collapses, plunges Lagos, others into darkness. Islamic leaders, Ogun, traditionalists, may clash over oral curfew. Ondo wife kills husband over telephone to another woman. Aisha Buhari, birthday greetings absent as president's wife clocks 50. And this one here says, dismiss corp supplied five AK-47 rifles for of a bank robbery suspect. So we see that years after, there's still an investigation into this, that popular of a bank robbery and uh, a suspect here giving a testimony in a dismissed cop, supplied five AK-47 rifles to the robbers. And Ms. Ayatuk, let's begin with this big story here. It's, it's an issue of national concern. Bandits tied 42 abductees in pairs, fled to bush on motorbikes. We've seen different reports, some saying 27 people were abducted, this one saying 42 abductees tied in pairs. But we still don't know just how many schoolboys were kidnapped, but we do know for sure that uh, one boy who raised the alarm was unfortunately shot. It's not the first time we're seeing kidnappings like that. The first one we saw, I believe, was Chibok 2014, Dapchi, Kankara, uh, December 2020, and now Kajara uh, 2021, February. What are your thoughts on this repeated abductions of our school children, especially in northern Nigeria? I, I, I hope I'll be articulate this morning and then um, I'll try very hard not to allow emotions or sentiments to um, over be cloud my presentation this morning. But I think that against what I may call the run of play, um, I think we Nigerians need to start asking ourselves some very hard questions. I think the time has come when we need to know that when you point one finger at someone, the other 
four fingers are pointing at you. I, I think that we Nigerians need to come to take full responsibility for the government that we have. And I, I want to call on people who have been blessed by God like myself. And these people include the likes of Dan Gote, the likes of Otedola, the likes of um, Atiku, the likes of Ashiwaju. These are people whom this country, for good or for bad, has helped them to be where they are. I think the time has come when we should search our conscience as to if we all understand what government is all about. And the people that we put in government to superintend over the affairs of this country. I think that the man who, who blames the dog, the dog from, you know, who expects the dog to meow or the cat to bark, the problem is not with the dog or with the cat. It is with the person. By the time you elect people into office, question number one is that what is the work they are supposed to do? And question number two is how competent are they to do the work? Number two, we the elite, we should know what government is and what governance is. And if we understand that after God, the next most important institution globally is government, and then we toil and we, we monkey, as it were, with our governance, the selection process. Look at where we are today. Every day, insecurity is taking over this country. And I don't know if we appreciate the bigger picture of students being afraid to go to school, children being afraid to go to school. I'm not talking just, I'm not talking just insecurity generally. But do we really know the bigger picture? Are we so blind that we cannot see what waits tomorrow? Where a father, out of love for the child, is afraid to send the child to school. Where a child, out of fear of insecurity, is afraid to go to school. What nation are we going to have when education has become something that children don't look up to? Even parents can no longer afford. This is what's bothering it, me. AI talk. If, if it seems that these you know, repeated abductions would affect enrollment statistics in northern Nigeria, would you, you know, be right to conclude that this might be an attack on education? Since we've seen how banditry seem to be so anti-Western Western policies, including education, would that be the main target of these operations? See, let me tell you something. I say it again, I'm no longer going to blame government. I'm not going to blame government because these people didn't get into governance to serve you. No, we collected their money. We collected their money. So it was an enterprise. It was a business. It was a transaction. Government has a lot of money, a lot of resources. So these people got in there, they paid us to go and make money. So all these things about insecurity, when it comes up, the solution is what can we buy? What can we buy? That is why the National Orientation Agency is moribund. That is why anything that does not bring money, contract, is not appealing to government because section chapter 2, section 14, subsection 2B, which states categorically, emphatically that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. This section means right. nothing to them. So, so many people in government don't even know that section. It's so it's talk. about our future. It's about education. All right. Um, a lot of people may not agree, you know, that um, um, all Nigerians, because not every Nigerian was paid uh, during the elections or sold their votes. Uh, there's still a lot of people who came out to vote, uh, but unfortunately didn't get the candidates that they um, uh, wanted or they would have preferred. Uh, you know, we could also accept that we have issues with our... Um, 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 electoral process, you know, that still needs to be fixed to encourage more Nigerians. But that's a different conversation. Let, let's move to another paper. There's something on the nation that I find pretty interesting that I think you would like to speak on. Um, on the nation this morning, it says fresh uh, mass abduction, 
from school hostel sparks outrage. Also, inflation will increase production costs, as um, uh, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. And this is the one. Defense Minister, and that is uh, Major General Magachi, uh, to Nigerians, don't be cowards. Confront bandits. Suspects admit killing 11 during a fire robbery. ICPC uncovers widespread budget fraud in agencies. Also, uh, PDP governors fought centralization of community policing. One other that I will quickly squeeze in IMF backs CBN's ban on cryptocurrency and FEC OK's road contracts in Ogun and uh, Ondo State. All right, so I, I want you, your view on the you know, comments made by the Minister of Defense saying that Nigerians should not just stand by and watch while bandits attack their communities. They should defend themselves and, um, according to the papers, not be cowards. So, so let's quickly speak on that. Okay, two things. If he was a Nigerian citizen like you and I, I would have applauded and said it makes sense. It makes sense. It's about time. As sad as it is, I think that if you cannot be protected, you should protect yourself. Because sitting down to blame others while they are being maimed and killed does not make sense to me. But if you are the defense minister, giving a job to do, and what you are telling me is, my guy, you don't pass me, or how can I just defend myself? I wonder what you are still doing in that office. I really wonder what you are still doing in that office. I expect the man to tell me, these are the things I'm doing to give me that confidence. You know, based on the confidence, and he's going to say, I need a partnership. I want people to also partner with me in this thing. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Now, that is what comes from an elected officer to do a job because it's right and proper for him to say, look, this job is better done when we do it together. Yes, I'm on the seat. Yes, I'm driving. And he even tells you what he is doing and what he wants you to do. But when he throws his arms in the air and says, guys, guys, you better be defend yourself, that should come from a responsible citizen who feels as aggrieved as I am, it should not come from my Minister of Defense. I don't think he's the right person to have told me that. He's just put fear and panic into me, and then he has emboldened this, the, the, the insecurity agents because they're like, oh, 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 they are starting to run. And again, it's a, a double speak from a government who is telling people, bring your arms. You know, we want to mop up life weapons and the, you know, the this proliferation of um, light weapons and small arms. When the government on one hand is saying, mop up all this, bring your small arms and light weapons. And on the other hand, government, because a minister of defense is government at the highest level, is saying, defend yourselves. Now, is he telling me that bring your gun and go and look for firewood to defend yourself? I don't know which one to go. Hmm. All right. Okay, turning now to this day newspaper. It says, Victorious Okonjo Iwela, pledges to rebrand, reform WTO, World Trade Organization, as Director General. Northwest governors seek more time for ranching. FG targets vaccinating 109 million Nigerians in two years. At $63, crude oil price hits 13-month high. And we see insecurity on the agenda uh, governors, you know, of Nigeria, and we see defense minister here, we see people in the Nigerian armed forces here in a security meeting in Kaduna just yesterday. These are the top stories here on the front page of the uh, this day newspaper. Let's talk a bit about uh, Ngozi Okonjewela. She eventually emerged as DG of the World Trade Organization, and she's pledging to rebrand and reform WTO. What are your thoughts on this? Please, for a minute, thanks for bringing some smile to my face. At least that's, that's lighting me up a little bit. Um, this lady is just awesome in more ways than one. And um, I feel privileged to have a personal relationship with her. As a matter of fact, that at a time like this, when the world is on her, all 142 nations, heads of government, are scrambling for her attention. I, to, for me to have the privilege of talking with her, 
less than a week ago shows how simple and down-to-earth focused and committed this lady is. And the second thing I want to bring out is that this is the same lady that Nigerians had the audacity, the F country, the animal boldness, the men to, 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 to brand her somebody who ruined Nigeria's economy. I think the time has come when we should play down politics and recognize our stars, the additionals of this world, the Okonjo Iwalas of this world, the Aminas of this world coming from Nigeria. And we should learn a lesson on leadership recruitment profiling. Look at what this lady went through. And she is today the DG of, 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 of um, WTO, not because it was zoned to Nigeria, zoned to Africa, but because she met the world. She competed with the very best in the world, and she beat them all hands down. And the whole world, if you look at her profile, you'll be amazed. And yet, we are going to, in 2023, have a president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And some names are coming up that just make me wonder if we are, we are thinking at all. I pray that all of us will wake up and give Nigeria a chief executive that will hit the ground running from day one. Look at what she's saying. The first day in office, she gave, you, gave us her agenda. By the next day, she was taking this step. The next day, she was taking it. She is on top of the situation. My priorities are simple. I've got to rebrand. I've got to refocus. I've got to, because of the meeting with the science of the times, this is what leadership is all about. And Nigeria has more than enough to expect to have leadership that, that, that is present and active and competent and right. capable with the character that we can all vouch for. Ezekiel Yanitok, thank you so much for your time this morning. Um, thank you. Lovely um, speaking with you. And, of course, looking forward to another time where we can share thoughts on these uh, big stories. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Stay with us uh, when we come back. It's um, uh, today in history. And, of course, uh, remember that uh, we still have uh, discussions, expand, expanded discussions on security. Uh, Niger State is, of course, uh, on the front burner this morning. Uh, comes up here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa.